Uh, I'm Darren Miller. I've uh, been racing late models eight years, I believe. This is the eighth year. Went to the local racetrack and was watching and uh, thought, I thought that'd be kind of fun to do. And so then we went and built a, built a car over the winter. And I started out racing a sportsman's car. And we built a car and started racing the next year and had some pretty decent success. Raced uh, Sportsman's again the next year, and then we moved up to late model, and everything progressed from there. I don't really see that happening. Um, I mean, a lot of guys seem to look at it that way, but at this point in, in my career, I mean, uh, I haven't had any opportunities to go that way, and seems like by the time you get to my age, heck, I'm too old for <laughs> for that already, and I'm not very old, but don't seem like they they're looking for uh, you know they want young kids coming into that stuff, and I just you know never had any connections or never had any you know anyone show any interest in that, so I. Realistically, I don't foresee it happening, so I just, I'd like to get to the top of this game and I'd be pretty happy with that. I actually, I'm actually the team owner. Um, no, it's not cheap. Uh, we've been fortunate enough to, to do well enough to keep this, uh, you know, I basically funded off of you know, off of our winnings and off of sponsorship is, uh, I mean, that's how we keep this deal going. So a lot of times the pressure gets on pretty hard to, uh, to have to perform to keep things going. <laughs> uh, well, we're always seeking sponsorship. Uh, right now I have as far as my main sponsors, uh, Bob Miller uh, of Hawkeye Trucking, uh, Larry Mooring um, of Graphic Arts Express, and McLaughlin Freight Services. Johnny Johnson helps me with Ideal Ready Mix. Um, I got Napa and Greg Greenhill Construction and then a whole list of product sponsors, uh, Rocket Chassis, and the big list of product stuff. <laughs> you know, most everybody wants to, uh, obviously wants to win the World 100. Uh, I mean, that's definitely, definitely one I want to win. Um, best we've ever run there, we run second. A year ago, uh, well, it'd be two years ago coming up this year in the world. Uh, I'd definitely like to win that, you know. For myself, the dream would probably, uh, the dream's definitely way up there just because of the, the purse. I mean, the, right now I need to win the dream worse than I need to win the World 100 because the dream pays a lot more. <laughs> um, well, nowadays, I mean, obviously, in all the big races, you when you leave home, you got to figure out beating Bloomquist. I mean, if you're going to win uh, at any of the big shows, you almost got to figure out that that's the guy you're going to have to beat. Of course, you got, you know, Earl and, I mean, there's a whole group of guys out here that are really good. I mean, this thing's uh, a super competitive uh, sport right now. Um, you know, as far as as far as past, it's it's kind of funny because um, you know, there's not. I didn't grow up around racing, so. You know, I didn't have any, I mean, some of the greatest ones that I ever saw, 
I'm still racing against. You know, when I first started going to late model races, uh, Billy Moyer and Scott Bloomquist were were the top guys, and they're still here, and probably a couple of the top guys still today. <laughs> so, um, you know, and other other stuff. You know, I've just kept so busy. I don't even. I'm lucky if I see two NASCAR races a year on on TV. I just don't even don't get to follow that stuff that much. Um, hard to say how long I'll keep racing. Uh, I wouldn't even want to speculate, but I would, I mean, I would, I figure on being in some form of racing. I, I mean, I do a lot of my own shock work and building of a lot of the parts and, you know, I'm, I do a lot of that stuff myself on the cars, and if we end up, you know, hard to say what what I'll end up doing, but I'm sure once I'm done actually racing myself, I'll be doing work of some sort in the racing, racing end as far as working on uh, cars or building cars or, you know, you, Hopefully that's far enough down the road that we'll just see where things lead first. I mean, we sell shirts and we've got die casts and stuff in here, but we don't have a big display out back or anything. We do fair. I mean, you know, I guess I don't really know what a, how much, what's normal, you know? I mean, we sell, we sell quite a bit of stuff, I guess, so. Uh, I'm not going to complain about it. I think one of the biggest things they need to look at is the way we do a lot of stuff. Uh, all of them want to do some kind of gimmick or something, you know, as far as our lineups, play these invert games or whatever. And I honestly believe that's bad for our sport because it's almost like, like it's not serious. And any, any other major sport that has big sponsorship, I mean, everything's heads up. I mean, let the, it's straight up the fastest cars on the pole and you race and I can't see how you can get sponsors to come in and want to seriously be involved when the sanctioning bodies and stuff make it to where it almost seems not serious. When it is, I mean, you look through the pits, the dollars and the effort that go into this stuff, it's serious, but yet our sanctioning bodies almost try to make it to where it's not serious. And until they do, I don't know how people can come in and take it seriously. It definitely isn't necessary anymore. Um, they did that back years ago when you had guys that, you know, heck, people used to win. Uh, Donnie Moran won the World 100 one time by like three laps anymore it's usually within a couple car links, you know, on any of the races. You don't see the, the domination from two or three guys like you did back, you know, 15 years ago when they started doing that stuff. It's just got so competitive that it's not needed. And another reason they do it is because of racetrack prep. I mean, I think that's another thing that, that hurts our sport. Uh, and we're here today and I've watched and I haven't seen crap happen to the racetrack. And uh, what do you, you know, if we don't have good surfaces to race on, you're not gonna have good races. You know, if they give us a good surface, 
they don't have to play them games because it'll be a good race. It just, we got to have something to race on. I mean, you look at the tracks that work hard on their race tracks and have a good surface for us to race on. They don't have to do any of that stuff. The pits are full of cars. The stands are full of people. You know, the, the first thing is, is to have a good race and the rest of it will will fall in line but you can't you can't play games and have gimmicks to try to get people here and then think they're going to leave happy when they just saw a, a shit race <laughs>